Welcome back to Newsday. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Well, it was a gloves off bare knuckles showdown in Atlanta, Georgia last night as the two presumptive candidates for November's U.S. presidential election faced off in the first debate ahead of polling day. The Democratic Party's incumbent President Joe Biden and his Republican rival Donald Trump have racked up a combined age of 159 years. And that age factor was just one out of a litany of issues which the two men addressed on the night, with others ranging from the U.S. economy, foreign affairs and migration across the Mexican border into the United States. Now, Dr. Kesta Onor is a research fellow at the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, and he joins us now to review the performance of Biden and Trump at that debate and how those performances might affect their chances when it's time for Americans to make a choice in November. Good day, Dr. Onor. It's always a pleasure to be in conversation with you. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me once again. All right. So it seems the reviews, the feedback, the polls so far are unanimous in that Trump won that debate. But let's take a look at some of the other uh, factors around this debate that are not being as discussed. Let's talk about the format, for example. So in this particular debate, there was no live audience uh, and there was the abil ability for microphones to be mic'd, which meant that unlike last time where we saw Donald Trump interrupting Joe Biden repeatedly, that was not possible. Um, and there was also no fact checking. So some people are saying that this was a great environment for Joe Biden to flourish, uh, but it seemed to still work in Donald Trump's favor. What are some of your thoughts on what we uh, witnessed just a few hours ago? Uh, thank you very much. It was actually, uh, I will say that uh, the debate came with mixed feelings. You know, I was uh, listening and uh, watching you know, attentively to the debates at the early hours of uh, this morning. And uh, from, you know, all indication, it appears that, uh, you know, uh, uh, David Trump came out, you know, you know, better in the sense that he was able to articulate some of the things he said. You know, when you look at uh, even the feelings from Democrats this morning, you know, some of them have already started panicking that uh, uh, the incumbent president of the United States of America, that is Joe Biden, performed below expectations. However, you know, there has been obvious uh, excuses, you know, from the Biden's camp, you know, they're saying that he had cool, that he was not in the best state of health. But critics are equally saying that... Uh, regardless of the fact that he had code or maybe he developed code, that even his presentation, he has not been able to articulate his points very well, especially areas that he should have capitalized on. You know, like areas like uh, when we talk about uh, January 6th, that he should have capitalized on those areas, you know, and the uh, Charlotte Vales to nail down his point, but he has failed to maximize these opportunities. However, we still have about uh, three to four months to the election. So I believe that uh, all hope is not lost. Um, Dr. Honor, but when you li li listen to all the issues that were addressed, do you think that there were any that could have played a crucial role, even if it's for the, the incumbent president to that would have, you know, given a, uh, him a better performance if he had touched on such subjects? Or do you think all grounds were covered in this debate? Uh, I don't believe that all grounds we are covered in the debate. If you look at uh, even their presentations yesterday, I believe that uh, uh, the former president, Donald Trump, was more coherent, you know, more assertive, and uh, a bit aggressive in marshalling out his points. Even though some of those is a uh, bullish ideas that people expected that he would have maybe bullied Biden, he managed to exercise some level of uh, restraint. You understand? 
But if you look at uh, uh, Biden presentation, you know, things like uh, rules and ways, when we talk about uh, the abortion bill, these are uh, areas of strength that Democrats would have capitalized to nail down their point. However, uh, Biden has already said this morning that it's difficult to debate with a lawyer, uh, with a liar. You understand? But in, if you check a look at the overall, uh, overall analysis, even from the presentation uh, this morning, uh, you realize that uh, uh, they've scored uh, uh, Trump about 64%, and then scoring Biden about uh, 33%. So if you look at the scores, you realize that uh, even uh, Biden supporters are already celebrating that they have at least, it's a very big uh, win for them. Dr. Ono, what do you think is the significance of this debate? Because if you look at the trajectory to this election, uh, Donald Trump's conviction didn't move uh, opinion polls regarding uh, the election significantly. Uh, Joe Biden's son's conviction, Hunter Biden, also didn't move opinion polls significantly. So what are the chances that the debate and the outcome and all that we're seeing and all that will dominate the news cycle for the next couple of weeks do you think this will make any significant impact on the opinion polls? Uh, and, and if not, what is it that you think American voters are actually looking for this time around? Well, uh, there is uh, this uh, general ag uh, agreement on, on consensus that uh, President Joe Biden is a good man and he is a good president. But when you look at his, uh, the state of his health, you know, even now, Democrats are still rallying down before their convention that will be coming up maybe next two months or so that maybe are looking at the possibility of maybe getting another candidate questioning the president's ability for him to carry on for the next uh, four years, you know, due to his health uh, status. Uh, but then again, if you look at the opinion pool this morning, you know, the opinion pool said that uh, about 81 percent, you know, still they are not moved by this debate. Then uh, about 14% are still, you know, considering they are trying to change their mind and consider, while about 5% have already changed their mind. And there are about 10% or thereabouts, you know, that have not, you know, they are neither here nor there. So if you look at the opinion pool, I believe that, uh, yes, uh, the debate at the early hour of this morning, that is from our own Nigerian time, you know, is very, very significant. However, there are still about three or four months before the election will take place. So I believe that the Democrats and uh, President Joe Biden precisely still have an ample opportunity to conv convince the American voters that he has what it takes for him to be there for the next four years or so, or year about. But then we look at uh, issues concerning his health and at least looking at his age. You saw the way that the wife brought you know, him into the platter, into the podium last night. You know, the way he was moving at his low pace. These are some of the issues that uh, voters mind, if he can be able to carry on. So these are some of the things that uh, are on the table that we are going to look at. Right now, what, what potential VP choices did you think were hinted uh, at uh, during the debates? And what effect do you think they might have during the race? Well, I think uh, the issue of uh, when you talk about the economy, you know, uh, uh, Donald Trump made the voters to understand that during his tenure that uh, American, you know, America had the, the strongest economy all over the world, uh, regardless of uh, the intrusion of COVID-19, that he was able, you know, to strengthen the economy and equally to challenge uh, China, you know, on the trade relationship. He equally made mention of uh, NATO that before he came on board, America was almost bearing most, uh, most of the burden concerning the NATO budget. America was spending about 70% or thereabout. But he made mention that he actually forced uh, all the NATO countries, you know, for them, that the relationship between America and that of Europe is an alliance and in a partnership, both of them are meant, you know, to contribute 
that he forced them to bring out money. And uh, since then, that others have been taking responsibility, not leaving the entire NATO expenses to America to bear the burden alone. He equally mentioned about changing the trade relationship between uh, America and uh, Europe. That initially, Europe, we are, you know, we are not keen on importing every, anything from America, but he changed the status quo. And then he talked about migration, that he, you know, fortify American borders and change some of the immigration laws. But, uh, you know, he made mention of uh, other things, talking about uh, the role and uh, ways, uh, you know, bill that was upturned during his tenure. But in all these things, I think that he was equally countered. You know, uh, uh, the incumbent president told him, you know, politely, that he, in his immigration law, that he was separating mother and children. Okay. That even that of NATO, and th that he want to move out of NATO. All right. That there is no how America can fight alone because America need a viable partnership uh, and alliance. Uh, absolutely. Now, just very, very briefly before we go, uh, Dr. Honor, some people are, have gone as far as saying, of course, there is panic in the democratic uh, situation room at the moment, undoubtedly. And some are saying that it's a possibility that uh, Joe Biden may not survive as the candidate when it comes down to the final ballots. Some of the names being thrown forward, of course, Vice President Kamala Harris, Governors Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmer, uh, J.B. Pritzker. Some people are even saying Michelle Obama. Do you think Biden will make it to the final ballot? Well, I think uh, it depends on Biden himself, because uh, even the American Constitution does not uh, you know, make provision for them to change a candidate at this particular juncture. It's not left for the incumbent president for him to come out and say, look, I have served this country well, that maybe I prefer somebody younger from the Democrats for him to replace me. So if he can maybe take that decision, I believe that will galvanize you know, the opinion pool and maybe, maybe move in favor of Democrats. But if he continue at this pace, well, uh, the next two or three months will tell us you know, what the future will look like. All right, NIIA Research Fellow, Dr. Kester Ono, thank you so much for your analysis on the debate. We appreciate your time here on Newsday as always. Thank you for joining us.